Gajika Kalsa, Waigajiki Fate. This is the story of Yogi Bhajan and the sea cucumber. Now, back in the 1980s, I was on security with Yogi Bhajan. My name is Gursant Singh, and I was with Yogi Bhajan for about 30 years. So I'm very familiar with a lot of what happened in there at Yogi Bhajan's group and what Yogi Bhajan did. Yogi Bhajan would have me go buy these sea cucumbers at the Chinese market in Los Angeles. Now, a sea cucumber is a sea animal. And the Chinese attribute male sexual health and aphrodisiac qualities to this sea cucumber. And the reason for that is that the sea cucumber physically resembles a phallus and uses a defense mechanism similar to ejaculation as it stiffens and squirts a jet of water at the aggressor. And you can see these pictures I took off the internet of some of these sea cucumbers. So these poor sea animals were victims of Yogi Bhajan's sex, desire, and lust. Why did Yogi Bhajan need this so-called aphrodisiac when he was married and he was not having sex with his wife? That's the question that I bring up. And the reason I know for a fact that Yogi Bhajan was not having sex with his wife was because in the 1980s, I was a patient with an Ayurvedic doctor who was the same doctor as Inderjeet Karputi, who is Yogi Bhajan's wife. Now, what happened was, I was the next patient after Yogi Bhajan was seen by this Ayurvedic doctor. And the Ayurvedic doctor went on and on when I came in to see the Ayurvedic doctor about how Yogi Bhajan's wife was having a problem with her not having sex with her husband anymore. Yogi Bhajan refused to have sex with her. So, as you know, doctors from India are very open about uh, patients' um, conditions or what they uh, say. And there's really no privacy in India in terms of that goes. They share with whatever uh, the patient might say, unlike the West. So this Ayurvedic doctor, like I said, kept going on and on about this. So I know that it's a fact that Yogi Bhajan was not having sex with his wife. So why did he need these poor sea cucumbers, which he thought were aphrodisiacs, I'm sure? Now, this brings up the bigger question that I want to put to rest about this delusional conception that Yogi Bhajan was some kind of pious celibate monk who doled out higher spiritual wisdom. The fact that YB had me buy these sea cucumbers is very suspicious. Because, I, like I said, I know for a fact that YB was not having sex with his wife, Indrajit Karputi. This was as related to me by an Ayurvedic doctor from India, who was Mrs. Putti's personal doctor. So why was YB eating these poor sea cucumbers, these aphrodisiacs, if he wasn't having sex? Now, there, there are also the multiple accounts of YB's sexual affairs with his female secretaries, given by former students, and YB's proven pathological lies in other areas. With all these accounts about Yogi Bhajan's sleazy sex life and lies, you have to come to the conclusion that Yogi Bhajan was probably lying through his teeth when he claimed publicly that he was celibate. Now, why should this matter for our misguided yogis and yoginis who are taking Yogi Bhajan's parchar, his teachings, as the 
gospel truth. You know in the old saying is, actions speak louder than words. Well, these yoginis and yogis who are following Yogi Bhajan point to the guidance from Yogi Bhajan. There's one such yogini who just produced a video about kundalini orga orgasms and how to have a hot sex time doing kundalini yoga. Her name is Guru Jogatkar. She ha works at this Rama Institute there in Boulder, Colorado. She says here in an interview, she says where she recommends these uh, jade eggs that uh, really shamefully she uses to insert into her vagina and recommends others to do the same thing for sexual pleasure. She says here, I found that Yogi Bhajan, who is the founder of Kulini Yoga, had tons of teachings on this stuff. So it is not surprising that this Guru Jagatkar and these other yoginis and yogis would look to Yogi Bhajan for guidance. These yoga students like Guru Jagatkar are very observant and are looking deeper at the evidence and accounts which reveal YB's activities is related by these former students that are coming out, like myself and others. Former followers of Yogi Bhajan talk about all of these misguided and unseek like tantric philosophies of Yogi Bhajan. All these things are starting to come out now. And what do the yoga students see now with these actions of Yogi Bhajans? Well, these yoga students see a powerful and charismatic yogi in Yogi Bhajan who sleep, slept in the same room with his secretaries. He bought aphrodisiacs. He had young female secretaries who were <clears throat> giving accounts of YB having these sexual encounters with them and giving YB massages. There's lectures by YB on how to have sex. There are YB's teachings about tantric yoga, which are interpreted by Sikhs thus. According to the tantrics, the best form of worship is the fullest satisfaction of the sexual desires of, a, of man. Therefore, sexual intercourse is prescribed as part of tantric worship. And that's what Yogi Bhajan was into, this tantric worship. There's no two ways about it. Just look at these phallic drawings that Yogi Bhajan did. They're not only disgusting and completely unseek like but they clearly have leanings towards looking like these uh, phallic images of Shiv Lingams. You can see here images of Shiv Lingams which look really suspiciously like these Yogi Bhajan drawings. Right here, see? So, Yogi Bhajan painted these multiple drawings and explicit phallic drawings with words power written on the phalluses. So what guidance then should yoga, yoga students take from Yogi Bhajan's teachings and actions in the area of sex and everything else for that matter, if not to form a twisted Kundalini sex philosophy as this Guru Jagat has done and others? 
Now this Guru Jagat car made this really disturbing video. It was taken off the internet, not, but not before 30,000 people viewed it, where she recommends this Kundalini Yoga for having a Kundalini Yoga orgasm on a hot date, the way she sets, puts it. And here's a class, if we can call it that, where she recommends Kundalini Yoga to experience simple, fun, and hot yogic practices to increase energy between you and your partner. It's completely unseek like and for a woman who calls herself Kar Singh, Kar and Khalsa, it shouldn't be happening. She refuses to follow the Sikh Rehat Mariyata, like most of these Yogi Bhajan followers. And now they're getting into all of these clearly Shiv Shakti practices. This jade egg that she recommends completely resembles this Shiv Lingam that the Hindus worship. And why are they doing it? Because they want to get these magical powers and these, they, as they perceive them as magical powers, is really nonsense is what it is. And they do all of these completely unseek like practices. Astrology, worship Hindu gods, just wearing this big, huge coral uh, gem here. You can see it. And what's really disturbing, I looked it up here about how this gem relates to um, Mars energy, which is nothing more than the Hindu um, god. Mangala. I'll read here what it says here on this Hindu website about um, this red coral gemstone. It says, as per Hindu Vata practices, red coral gemstone is worn to please the Hindu god Mars or Mangal Graha. Mars being the god of war and energy. He is the commander in chief of the assembly of the nine planets. His red color is the symbol of blood and perseverance in human life. He is known as Ang. Garak, the son of the earth, due to his nearness to the earth. It is considered a malefic planet in Hindu Jyotish astrology and gives its natives the ability to put their own desires above those of others. The gemstone is related to Mars is red coral or lal munga. So you got that. By Guru Jagatkar wearing this ring, it's, she's um, getting her own desires above those of others. That gives her the power to get her desires above those of others. That's the idea of this. What's really disturbing is, is how 3HO, which is the Yogi Bhajan official organization, is promoting and endorsing this Guru Jagatkar. They say here in their official website, Guru Jagatkar is the brightest Lighthouse in our Kundalini community. Her dedication and her truth radiate out the teachings of Yogi Bhajan in the most authentic, powerful way. She runs an amazing studio, Rama Institute, Rama TV. They worship Hindu gods here. They're worshiping. They're doing his full moon mantra of Kali and Durga. So this is how people are following these corrupt teachings of Yogi Bhajan. So let's get back to a little bit about what Yogi Bhajan was about, what he did. This was an excellent article that came out in 2010. Yogi's Legacy in Question. How it talks about former followers who say Yogi, Yogi Bhajan abused his position for power, money, and sex. Now many of you have probably heard about these sexual affairs Yogi Bhajan had and the abuses that he heaped on his students. This was a lawsuit that was brought against Yogi Bhajan by a former secretary of Yogi Bhajan. In fact, his top secretary, Prem Kakar Khalsa. And these documents were uncovered a few years back, which reveal a very disturbing and alarming affidavit by Premka, where she talks about being abused and raped by Yogi Bhajan. And it wasn't just her. There were several others, too. 
So I invite Sikhs and everybody else, Yogi Bhajan students, to really investigate all of this. Yogi Bhajan was a real pervert. I mean, I got these drawings from Yogi Bhajan, and they're clearly sexual in nature, talking about power and ego having to do with uh, his tantric yoga teachings. And then, like I said, he would get, do his, eat these aphrodisiacs, and he wrote this book. Or actually, this was done after... I think it was actually done while he was alive still. They called it the Game of Love, where they put some of these drawings in there. The book was a complete flop. But it was interesting how uh, they refer to it and make such a big endorsement of it. It should have been called the Game of Lust. They call it a book of consciousness. That's complete rubbish. Here's some more uh, drawings by Yogi Bhajan. And you can see here I was, he makes this phallic drawing. And then he puts the word, he puts the word God on, and then his signature. Why is he putting God with this phallic symbol? Uh, it's really, you got to wonder what's really going on there. And a lot of these statues and images there at Yogi Bhajan's ranch re resemble phallic uh, symbols. So Yogi Bhajan's teachings were about sex, power. Here you can see another drawing here with Yogi Bhajan phallic drawing. Talks about power. It says power. He wrote power in there. Then the Yogi Bhajan people keep his ugly tantric painting there in the Dabar of the city of Grand Sahib, shamefully. So the Yogi Bhajan people follow in Yogi Bhajan's footsteps and do all these Yogi Bhajan tantric yogas and they worship these idols that look like Shiva, Shiv Lingams by this Gurmukhar, do completely un Sikh like activities and then SikhNet promotes them shamefully. They certainly don't speak up against these corrupt Yogi Bhajan practices. Here's Yogi Bhajan with this big idol of Shiva. You can see him there looking at it and gazing at it. Maybe he's asking that Shiva idol what spices he should use or what herbs he should use. I don't know. He's eating dinner there, it looks like. And then the Yogi Bhajan people <clears throat> had this uh, last rites Hindu puja for Yogi Bhajan there, right up against that Shiva statue. So you really have to say, what relationship did Yogi Bhajan have to Shiva? And then this guru... Um, this Gudjokar, she's the head there of the uh, Khalsa Council now, and she's um, pictured here as being the director of this PR and marketing where they sell these Ganesha t shirts and all these Hindu Vata things. Now, what's um, really disturbing here is I've talked about this before, but it's very important how the Yogi Bhajan people have signed on to this agreement few years back when they were fighting with some of their other members over billions of dollars, how they signed on and said that they cannot criticize Yogi Bhajan. They have a non-disparagement agreement, it's called. You can see it down here. I hope you can read it, but I can send you the link to the, the uh, <clears throat> PDF of this. Then they also have to practice the Sikh religion as taught by Yogi Bhajan. All of these Yogi Bhajan organizations like SikhNet, 3HO, Sikh Dharma International have to teach the Sikh religion as taught by Yogi Bhajan. So what that means is that if there's some discrepancy between Yogi Bhajan's teachings and the Sikh Rahad or the Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib, they have to follow Yogi Bhajan's teachings. And of course, as you've seen, there's all kinds of discrepancies between the Sikh Rahat Maryad and what Yogi Bhajan taught. So that leaves them with doing what? Teaching Yogi Bhajan's teachings, which are against Sikhi. Well, thank you for your time, and I hope you'll investigate some of these other things I talk about here. Wahegujika Khalsa, Wahegujiki Fateh.